Remember that figured bass tells you where to write the notes. Well, figured bass can also tell you what sharps or flats you need for a chord. Let's look at a few examples. <clears throat> As you know, the six underneath the bass note tells us that we're writing a first inversion chord. So let's go ahead and do that. Write a note here, and then we also write a note here. Now, <clears throat> you know from our previous work that the root would be C, and then the other notes are C, E, and G. So we've actually created a C major triad right here. Now, if you see a slash through a note, that's telling you to raise that note by a half step. Okay, so remember the six is indicating the C. So we're actually raising the C up a half step to C sharp. And that changes this chord that we've written here to C sharp E G, which actually happens to be a C sharp diminished chord. Okay. So just by altering that one note, we've created a whole new chord. Likewise, um, we'll also C figured bass that has flats. So underneath this bass note, we have 6-4, which as you know, tells us we're writing a second inversion chord. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and the chord that we've written here, again, you know that the root would be A, and the other notes are C and E flat. And as you know, that chord is an A diminished chord. Now, what if you see a flat beside this 4? Okay. That is telling you to lower the note by a half step. Okay. So, we look at the 4th, which is the A, lower it by a half step to A flat. Okay. And, notice the chord that we have now. We've altered that, and now it becomes an A flat major chord. So just by altering that one note, we've created a whole new chord. Um, there are a couple other of quirky things that you'll see uh, involving accidentals in figured bass. Sometimes you might see an accidental that's just hanging in midair. If you do, that accidental always refers to the third. Okay. So, first, remember that the blank underneath, the blank space, is abbreviation for 5-3. So we're writing a root position chord. Okay. If we write E, G, and B, then what we've written is an E minor chord. Now, because of this sharp though, it affects the third of the chord. So, we raise the G up to G sharp, and it becomes a G major chord. So again, we've altered one note, but we have a whole new chord. You may also see this flat hanging in midair in conjunction with a first inversion chord. So, again, if you look at this six right here, then that's telling us we're building a first inversion chord. So let's go ahead and do that. The notes um, that we've written here create an A minor chord. But now that we have this flat underneath, the flat is telling us to lower that third, that interval of third, by a half step. So we change this E, lower it down to E flat and we've created an A diminished chord. Okay. So, this can obviously get a little bit complicated, but just use a figured bass. If you actually think about the numbers, think about the accidentals, it actually turns out to be pretty easy, so don't make it harder than it actually is. Do a little bit of practice with this, and then there's one last thing we'll talk about with figured bass.